The Internet is the network of networks that links users around the world. It's complex and even mysterious because few people know everything about it. But there are some basics about the Internet that are relatively easy to learn. The Internet. This program is for anyone who will use the Internet. We've simplified commands and processes so you'll get a feel for what the Internet is all about. But it takes time, time spent cruising on the net to really get proficient. So take the time now to watch this program all the way through. Then go online and use what you've learned. Here's what we'll cover. Some history and description of the Internet. Then the big picture. We'll also look at some commercial access providers and costs and talk technical about modems and communication software that link your computer to the net. Then we'll get to the good stuff, the networks you can access and some tools you use to find information. Finally, we'll cover netiquette and talk about the importance of guarding against viruses on the Internet. The Internet began in the late 60s. Communications and data experts at the Department of Defense created a way for computer networks to connect to each other without a central control mechanism. The absence of central control would make it impossible for enemy countries to disrupt U.S. communications in the event of a nuclear war. That's why today there is no internet company that you simply dial up. The internet is a network of networks, university, government, commercial, and other networks that are all connected worldwide. There's more than 30 million users and an estimated million more users going online every month. The big picture. So how do you get on the internet? Well, you have your computer's modem dial up a commercial data network like SprintNet or MCI's TimeNet. At the login prompt, you enter the name of your internet access provider, then your username and password. The internet provider will have the powerful, high-speed hardware and software that's needed to talk with the internet networks. There are ways for individuals to access the net directly but they require some significant expense and technical expertise and are beyond the scope of this program. In general, individual users access the net through an access provider. Once you connect to the net, you can send messages to other people on electronic mail, also called email. Often download software for free, join news groups to stay up to date on issues you're concerned about, or research a school project by accessing files at a university. And you can connect your PC with a remote computer so you're a virtual user at the remote site. Some people already have access to the net at their schools or workplace. If you don't, you'll probably subscribe to a commercial or public provider. Some online services don't provide full internet access. That is, they may offer email and news groups but not software download or file search services. We're listing only full internet access providers. First, commercial providers. All fees quoted are current at the time this video is being produced. Delphi, the service we'll use when we go online in a few moments, has a five hour free trial offer and immediate access with a valid credit card. After your trial period, you'll pay $10 a month for the first four hours of use each month. Additional use is $4 an hour. Note there's a $9 an hour weekday surcharge for the telephone link and a $3 a month charge for internet services. To talk with a representative, call Delphi at 1-800-544-4005 for more information. UltraDial provides full internet access for $20 a month for individual users with a startup charge of $99. There's a $3 per hour access charge to one of Alternet's U.S. points of presence or $9 per hour to their 800 number. To talk with a representative, call UltraDial at 1-800-488-6384. The Institute for Global Communications, or IGC, is a nonprofit group that provides Internet access on four interrelated networks. When you subscribe to their services, you support a computer system that supports peace and environmental issues. There's a $15 one-time sign-up fee, plus $10 a month, 
and $7 per hour on weekdays or $5 per hour on evenings and weekends. Their number is 415-442-0220. These are just a few commercial providers. In some areas of the U.S., free nets are available. Not all of them have full internet access, but they're worth knowing about, because like everything about the internet, they're getting more sophisticated every minute. As the name says, service is free. The hitch is, there may be a limited number of lines allocated for community use, and session time is usually limited, say an hour at a time. We'll see a list of free nets later in this program. We like Delphi because of their five hour free trial. And you can subscribe to Delphi and start using internet services right away. Delphi also provides easy menus that save a lot of time in finding and accessing information. To begin, it's pretty obvious you need a computer with an 80 column display. We're using Quicklink Gold, which is operating in the Windows environment. You also need a modem the device that lets your computer communicate with other computers over telephone lines. The modem speed may range from 300 to 14,400 bits per second. The faster the better, especially if you'll be downloading software. Our modem speed is 14,400 BPS. Your communications package should let you set the connection speed to correspond with your modem speed, set terminal emulation, and support file receive protocols, including X modem, Y modem, and Z modem, as well as Kermit and text transfers. These parameters are fairly standard for communication software. At the setup menu for your communication software, set these parameters. Terminal emulation at VT100 or higher, VT102, VT220, or VT320. 8 data bits, no parity, and one stop bit. If possible, turn off auto line feed and carriage return line feed settings. If your modem is 2400 baud or less, set X on X off handshaking to on and set duplex to full. If your modem is higher than 2400 baud, set handshaking to hardware. If you have a synchronous mode, turn local echo off. Again, we're using Delphi. Settings for other internet providers may vary. All set? Now, dial Delphi by modem at 1-800-365-4636. At the connection, you may have to press return more than once. The password is CCLU46. You'll see the Delphi welcome screen, then be prompted for your name, address, and phone number. Then you'll be given a choice of member or user names to select. The next screen will describe Delphi's fees in detail. You'll be asked for a credit card number, your mother's maiden name, and a password. Now Delphi will help you find a local access number and will summarize your username, password, and sign-on steps. Do a print screen or copy this info down and keep it handy. Delphi will then sign you off and you'll call back using the access number you selected earlier. If you have questions about connecting with Delphi, you may talk with a customer service rep at 1-800-695-4005. We'll take a short break from this sign-on procedure to talk about uppercase and lowercase commands, as well as help and FAQs. Internet commands are case sensitive, and most are typed in lowercase letters. Be careful when you type commands or enter information that you are typing in lowercase or uppercase, and that you are typing the exact letters that are specified, or your procedure may not work properly. In this program, we assume that lowercase is used for all commands, and we specify uppercase when it's required. Also, a word about help. Delphi gives you lots of help screens, which are customized for each area. Simply type H-E-L-P for more information. FAQ is the acronym for Frequently Asked Questions 
and you will see them everywhere on the Internet. FAQ menus will list questions and answers for many common questions and are very helpful to newcomers on the Internet. Now back to our sign-on process. When you connect via your access number, you'll be asked for your password. Then you'll select a new one for extra security. You'll get a brief introduction to Delphi, then see the main menu. At the What Do You Want To Do prompt, type Go Internet Registration or just Go I-N-T-R-E-G since you can abbreviate most commands in Delphi to the first two or three letters. Read the terms of use, pricing info, and access policy. Then enter the registration menu. When you agree to the terms of use, you are registered to use Internet services. We urge you to read Tips on Using Delphi on Delphi's main menu to learn about commands and capabilities. Information on the net is found in computers that are located at sites or addresses. Domain names tell us the category of institution. Some common ones are EDU for school or university, GOV for government, or COM for commercial network, MIL for military installation, and ORG for other organization. And each computer system has its own unique name. For example, you can send email to the president at whitehouse.gov, the computer system that receives his email. As you cruise the internet, you'll see many computer addresses. Internet Utility and Search Tools. In this section, we'll discuss some tools on the net. Then we'll talk about news groups, email, and finally, about netiquette and viruses. Here are just a few of the many tools you will use. FTP, or File Transfer Protocol, lets you download a file from a distant site. You will use FTP to find and download shareware or freeware to your own computer. Or use FTP to download the text of a report from a university research library. Gopher scans directories for the file names. It's a good tool to use for a general search on a subject. Archie searches too, but only finds files at sites which allow file transfer, FTP sites. With Telnet, your computer connects with another computer system, so you can look for information online in that remote computer. FTP. Let's start at the Internet Special Interest Group or INT menu. You can access sites directly using FTP from here, or use Delphi's Gopher menu and select 8 for downloadable programs. FTP is primarily designed to download software. Let's look for some MS-DOS software using the Oak Software Repository. Item number 11. Select 10 for MS-DOS. Press Enter to read this list online. Number 38 is a program for calculating. Select it by typing 38. We'll pick number 3 and Yes to download. We're using Z-Modem, which we selected to coordinate with our communication software. You should use what's compatible with your modem. The file is about 35,000 bytes, so it will take a minute or two to download. The program on calculating is now saved to our workspace in Delphi. We'll retrieve it a little later. In Delphi, Control-Z is the usual exit command from any area. We press Control-Z to go back to the Internet INT Gopher menu.
gopher. Gophers retrieve text-based information rather than binary files. We select search utility 16, then gophers by subject area number three. Let's look for some educational information. We select number 19. There are nine screens to choose from. And on page three, we see a publication called EduPage. So we select number 49 and press enter to read. We could download this file if we wanted to using the same procedure we used just for calculators. We see EduPage's index and then the article start. Press enter or type more to see the rest of the article. Then control Z until we get back to the internet INT menu. Telnet. Another powerful internet tool is the Telnet command, which connects your computer directly to a distant host computer. Let's look for a book at a library in Denver, Colorado. Type Telnet, then pac.carl.org the name and internet address of the Colorado Alliance of Research Libraries. Type PAC. To identify our terminal, we choose number five, which is VT100. Now press 1 for library catalogs. Then 11 for Denver Public Library, or DPL. One begins a search in DPL. Let's look for books on the internet. Type W, then internet at the prompt. We see there are 53 books about the net in the library system. After paging through a couple of screens, we type front slash, front slash, exit to leave Carl. Archie. The Archie command searches file names at FTP sites. Let's get to it by selecting the Gopher main menu. Then 16 search utilities. Then number one the Archie search utility. We'll start a search for internet information at the Internet Network Information Center, or Internic, so we select one. At the Archie prompt, we log in as Archie. Prog is the Archie command to search for files with a specified search name in them. We type prog space internet for a list of files about the internet. The first segment on the screen tells us there are files named. 
internet dash drafts at the DS dot internet dot net computer. We jot this down and control Z back to the main internet menu. Now we'll FTP to those files. In our previous example, we used Delphi's easy FTP menu to find a file. Delphi set up this menu to access sites where it knows FTP is allowed. You can also FTP directly to sites from Internet Special Interest Group menu, but not all sites allow access, especially during business hours. Type FTP and at the address prompt, ds.internic.net. The default is anonymous, so we press return. Delphi provides our username, and we hit return once again. Type dir and see the internet dash drafts file listed on the far right. On the far left, we see AD at the beginning of the string, so we know we're looking at the directory. Now we change directory, CD, to internet-drafts. Then DIR for a list of the files. There's many files. To stop scrolling in FTP, type Control-0. To retrieve a file in FTP, type Get Space and the name of the file in quotes. Let's read one of the text files. Type Get Quote Draft dash IETF dash ISN dash FAQ dash zero two dot TXT quote space uppercase T uppercase T We see now that the file is about using internet in schools. If we'd wanted to save this file to our Delphi workspace, we would not have typed uppercase T, uppercase T at the end of the get command. Delphi provides more detail on utilities and search commands in their help menus, so we suggest you read them thoroughly. These are just a few of the many search tools available on the net. We encourage you to explore the Delphi and Internet Special Interest Group menus thoroughly because there are many ways to find useful information. And remember, these are our examples. You can search for anything in the Internet. Just use your imagination. To exit, control Z until you get to the Delphi main menu. Email. We've spent the first part of this tutorial connecting to computers to find information. Let's talk now about some ways to connect with people on the Internet. First, electronic mail. Let's send ourselves a test message. From the Internet INT menu, type MAMA. At the mail prompt, type send. At two, type internet. Open quote your username.
about sign, Delphi dot, com quote, this tells email to send the message to the person with your username located in the Delphi commercial system. At subject, type test email message. Then a short message like, congratulations, you're on the internet. To send the message, press control Z. It's that easy. We'll come back to mail in a few minutes to read the message. For now, control Z back to the main internet menu. Usenet news groups. Usenet news groups are another popular way to communicate with people on the internet. News groups are arranged by category of interest, reading messages to find out what other people have to say about a particular topic. You may even want to post a message to voice your own opinion. However, we strongly urge you to become familiar with a specific group and spend time reading their messages before you post one to the entire group. At the main internet menu, type USE to select the Usenet news groups. And then NN to access the Usenet network. Uppercase G starts the listing of news groups to select from. After reading the list, at the prompt, type news.announce.newsusers. The group for news users and press return. You'll pick a letter in the far left column to read a message. The next column to the right lists the name of the person who posted the message and the size of the message. Let's read answers to frequently asked questions, FAQs. Press lowercase c, the letter for FAQ messages. You'll see that it's been selected by the asterisk next to it. Press the space bar to read messages. Type uppercase G again to look for news groups about another topic. How about school? Keep pressing N to see all the news groups with school in their name. To read one, simply type Y at the name of the news group. To exit from news groups, type uppercase Q. Electronic mail and file retrieval. Let's read the email message we sent earlier. Control Z back to the internet main menu and then type MAMA. -M -A. We see the prompt that says we have a message. So we type dir slash new for some detail. Type read one to read it. There it is. If this were a message from someone else, we could reply simply by typing reply, then our answering message. Control Z to send it, then Control Z to exit out of mail. Now we'll go to our workspace to retrieve the file on calculators that we got by FTP a little while ago. At the Delphi menu, type Workspace. Do a DIR command to see what's there. We chose Zmodem as our transfer language to send the file to us over the net. We are receiving or downloading this file to our computer, so at the WS prompt, we type download. 
The instructions for this part of the process vary depending on your communication software. You should be able to designate a path for the file at this point and download it from your workspace in Delphi to your home computer. Now choose Z modem. Type mail.mai. Now type Control Z to exit out of the workspace to the Delphi main menu. Now type INT to return to the Internet main menu. Let's find some Freenet information. At the Internet main menu, select Gopher. Choose the Freenet menu and then number one to read it. While some of these Freenets have limited access, they are available at no cost. So you might want to check out access for any that are in your area. Netiquette. Etiquette is necessary anytime people in a community interact with each other. Good manners make life more civilized. On the internet, a virtual community, netiquette is essential, especially for newcomers. Even if you've watched this introductory tape, there's still a lot to learn about the internet. So be sure to read the lists of FAQs or frequently asked questions anytime you get into a new area. If you join a news group or mailing list, read the messages for a few days. This so you get familiar with the style of the group before you post a message yourself. When you do send email or other messages, don't shout, that is, type in all uppercase. And don't get angry, or at least don't use angry words if you feel you must reply to someone you don't agree with. You could get flamed, sent nasty messages by hundreds of people who think you were in the wrong. If someone's behavior is really obnoxious, they could be banned from a particular news group or, at the extreme, lose their online privileges altogether. Also remember that the Internet began as a place without central control or authority. So many of the people who use it have a freewheeling sense of propriety. You may find topics that offend you. Just ignore them and pursue areas you feel comfortable with. Viruses. Finally, a word about viruses. Several years ago, a person on the internet unleashed a virus that caused computers to crash all over the country. Don't let this happen to you. Be sure you run an antivirus program on your computer regularly so your computer doesn't catch one or send one out over the net. A good program that tests downloaded software is Dr. Panda Utilities from Panda Systems in Wilmington, Delaware. It costs $79.95. Ask your videotape retailer for more information on videos about computer security as well as viruses. Thank you for joining us for an introductory look at Internet. Remember that our examples are just that, examples. You will use your own subjects to find software or information about everything from apples to zebras. We've clearly marked each section of this tape with special graphics so that after rewinding, you can fast forward to any section for a brush up. Good luck on the internet. Just remember to take your time, read your FAQs, use those help screens, and most important, have fun.